So you're curious what you can hatch from two kilometer, five kilometer, seven kilometer, 10 kilometer, or 12 kilometer eggs in Pokemon Go. Today we're talking about that. Let's get right into it. Timestamps below as always. So before I talk about what the exact hatches are, I wanna talk about when does what you can hatch from eggs actually change. The egg pool in Pokemon Go are set by seasons. So Pokemon Go is divided into seasons, which usually last around three months. And at the start of every season, the egg pool for that season changes. Currently right now is the season of mischief, which is happening September 1st, 10 a.m. to December 1st, 10 a.m. So the egg pool that I'm gonna about to talk about is going to be the eggs that are hatching until December 1st, 10 a.m. Then on December 1st, a new season will start and the egg pool might or might not get changed up. If you guys want me to start making videos about the egg pool every season, comment below because maybe that's something I can do. But let's talk about the egg pool for the season of mischief. Starting with the two kilometer eggs. First of all, I'm on silfroad.com backslash egg distance. I'll leave a link below if you want to check out this information for yourself. Now you can get a two kilometer egg by spinning a Pokestop when you have an egg slot open. And there's around a 53.7% chance of you actually getting an egg from that Pokestop or gym. Well, two kilometer eggs can hatch Metatites, which have around 11% chance of hatching, Whalemers, which have a 10% chance of hatching, Fletchlings, which have a 10% chance of hatching, Nidoran Male, which has a 10% chance of hatching, Nidoran Female has a 10% chance of hatching, Bunnelby has around a 10% chance of hatching, Lit Leo has around a 10% chance of hatching, Drifloom has around a 9% chance of hatching, Britzy has a 5% chance of hatching, Swirlix has a 5% chance of hatching, Swablu has a 5% chance of hatching, and Barboach has around a 4% chance of hatching. Also, all the Pokemon from the two kilometer egg pool can be shiny, except for Lit Leo, Spritzy, and Swirlix. Or lick. So pretty much all of them can be shiny except for those three. Now what about five kilometer eggs? Well, five kilometer eggs you can get from spinning a Pokestop or gym if you have an egg slot open. There's around a 29.6% chance of getting a five kilometer egg. From five kilometer eggs, you can hatch a Sableye, which has around an 18% chance of hatching. Togepi has around a 17% chance of hatching. Chespin has around a 10% chance of hatching. Fennekin has a 10% chance of hatching. Klingling has a 10% chance of hatching. Seal has around a 10% chance of hatching. Froki has around an 8% chance of hatching. Azuril has around a 7% chance of hatching. Skarmory has around a 3.5% chance of hatching. Pinaco has around a 3.5% chance of hatching. Also, if you are in Europe, so the whole European region, also from five kilometer eggs, you can get eggs that could hatch you junior Mr. Mime. So this is actually a region exclusive egg hatch from Europe. And there's around a 5% chance of hatching if you do get an egg from Europe and you end up hatching it. As far as shiny potentials in the five kilometer eggs, every single one can be shiny, except for Chespin, Fennekin, Klingling, and Froakie. So there's a lot of shiny potentials in here. Now, moving on to the 10 kilometer eggs. There's around a 16.7% chance of getting a 10 kilometer egg from a Pokestop or a gym as long as you have an egg slot open in your bag. Possible 10 kilometer eggs are Klingling, which has a 17% chance of hatching. Timber has around a 14% chance of hatching. Darumaka has around a 12% chance of hatching. Roughly has around a 10% chance of hatching. Emolga has around an 8.5% chance of hatching. Audino has around an 8.2% chance of hatching. Esper has around 8% chance of hatching. Mianfu has around a 5.6% chance of hatching. Gumi has around a 5.6% chance of hatching. Noiba has around a 4.6% chance of hatching. Riolo has around a 3.3% chance of hatching, and Axew has around a 1.5% chance of hatching. Super rare. As far as shinies in the 10 kilometer eggs, Clinked, Timber, Darumaka, Rufflet, Audino, and Riolu all can be shiny, but all the other ones cannot be shiny. So you do have some possible shiny potentials in there. Now moving on to the seven kilometer eggs. Now to get a seven kilometer eggs, you're gonna need an egg slot open, of course, in your bag, but you're gonna wanna go ahead and open a gift from a friend, and there is a chance that you get a seven kilometer egg as long as you have that egg slot open. You don't always get seven kilometer eggs from opening gifts, but you do sometimes. Let's go through what you can hatch. From seven kilometer eggs, we can have Alolan Geodude, which has around a 15% chance of hatching. Glaring Ponita has a 10% chance of hatching. Alolan Grimer has around a 9% chance of hatching. Glaring Farfetch has around a 9.5% chance of hatching. Alolan Sancher has around an 8.9% chance of hatching. Glaring Sunfisk has around an 8.9% chance of hatching. Alolan Meowth has around an 8.3% chance of hatching. Glaring Meowth has around an 8% chance of hatching. Alolan Diglett has a 7.9% chance of hatching. Alolan Vulpix has a 4.6% chance of hatching. Glaring Zigzagoon has a 4.4% chance of hatching and Galarian Slowpoke has a 2.9% chance of hatching and Galarian Darumaka has a 0.7% chance of hatching, which is super rare, one of the rarest egg hatches. As far as shinies go in seven kilometer eggs, by the way, all of them can be shiny except for Galarian Slowpoke and Galarian Darumaka. So there's a lot of shiny potentials in here. Now, finally, we have the 12 kilometer eggs. How do you get 12 kilometer eggs and what can you hatch for them? Well, to get 12 kilometer eggs, you're gonna have an egg slot open and you're gonna wanna battle a team rocket leader, whether that be Arlo, Cliff, or Sierra. Being the team rocket leader, as long as you have an egg slot open, will get you a 12 kilometer egg. Now you might've noticed there's three actual extra egg slots at the bottom of your egg storage, leading you up to a total of 12 egg slots. Now all the other eggs I mentioned, two, five, seven, and 10 kilometer eggs can't actually fit into those extra three egg slots. But if you don't have any storage in those original nine egg slots and you have space in the extra three, you can actually get 12 kilometer eggs and put them into the extra three egg slots. So think of it as kind of an extra storage in case you battle a team leader, you don't have an egg slot open, you can still get collect a 12 kilometer egg as long as you have an egg slot open out of all of 
the 12 egg slots. From 12 cloned eggs, you can hatch a Vullaby, which has around a 25% chance of hatch. Larvitar has an 18% chance of hatching. Absol has a 13.1% chance of hatching. Scraggy has a 12.2% chance of hatching. Ponyard has a 9.8% chance of hatching. Sandile has a 5% chance of hatching. Scroopy has a 4.5% chance of hatching. Dino has a 4.4. Panchim has a 4.3% chance of hatching. And Quillfish now has a 3.8% chance of hatching. The only shiny available Pokemon from 12 kilometer eggs are going to be Larvitar, Absol, Scroopy, Dino, and Quillfish. Now, some of you veteran players might have realized I did not talk about Adventure Sync eggs because I want to talk about them separately. If you don't know what an Adventure Sync egg is, it's a special egg you can get in Pokemon Go on Monday at 9 a.m. depending on how far you walked the past week. You can check out how far you walked by clicking your little trainer in the bottom left corner, scrolling down, and it'll come here and it'll show you how far I walked that week. Now, it's currently Wednesday, but on Monday at 9 a.m., if I have walked 25 kilometers that week, I will get a 5 kilometer Adventure Sync egg as long as I have one egg slot open out of all the 12 egg slots. Adventure Sync eggs can fit into those extra three egg slots, so you don't actually have to arrive a space in the original nine egg slots. If you walked 50 kilometers the past week, you will have a chance of getting a five kilometer and a 10 kilometer Adventure Sync egg. So you get two Adventure Sync eggs. Let's go through what those eggs can hatch as the egg pool is different for those eggs. Now the five kilometer eggs, if you walk to 25 kilometers and you get a five kilometer Adventure Sync egg, you can get a Cranidos, which has a 20% chance of hatching. Clauncher has a 19% chance of hatching. Tynemo has a 17.5% chance of hatching. Shieldon has a 14.2% chance of hatching. Frillish male and female has a 14.2% chance of hatching and Screlp has a 14% chance of hatching. The only shiny potential Pokemon from here is going to be Cranidos and Shieldon, but all the other ones cannot be shiny from these eggs. Now, if you walked the 50 kilometers last week, you can get the 10 kilometer Adventure Sync eggs. What can you hatch from those? Well, you can hatch a Dratini with a 22.9% chance of hatching. Bagon has a 22.9% chance of hatching. Noiba has a 16.9% chance of hatching. Riolo has a 14.5% chance of hatching. Dino has a 13.3% chance of hatching. And Beldum has a 9.6% chance of hatching. Every single one here can be shiny except for Noibat. So there's actually a lot of shiny potentials from these 10 kilometer Adventure Sync eggs. And these are actually great eggs since all of these Pokemon are pretty sawed after Pokemon. So those are Adventure Sync eggs. Just make sure you have an egg slot open at 9 a.m. on Monday so that when you do claim your Adventure Sync awards, you do end up getting a five kilometer or 10 kilometer Adventure Sync egg. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is gonna be event eggs. Now, sometimes during events, Pokemon Go changes the egg pool for certain egg types in honor of the event. For example, we have the Spring into Spring event where Yuji Niantic spawns a bunch of baby Pokemon in the two kilometer eggs, so you can hatch a bunch of baby Pokemon during the event. Now, currently, as I'm making this video, there's no event, but I just want to talk about how actually eggs work during events because some people are confused. People have asked me if I have a two kilometer egg and an event happens, does that two kilometer egg hatch the event Pokemon or does it hatch the Pokemon that are regular from the regular egg pool? Now, how eggs work is whenever you end up getting that egg is going to determine what's going to hatch from that egg. So currently, if I get a two kilometer egg, no matter when I hatch it, if it's during event, if it's two years in the future, 10 years in the future, it will hatch a Pokemon from this egg pool. For example, I could still have a two kilometer egg from that spring into spring event when the event was happening with the special two kilometer eggs. And if I hatch that egg right now, it will hatch an egg from that event. So from that event egg pool. So whenever you end up getting an egg is determines what you're going to hatch from the egg. So just note that when an event starts, you need to clear out all your eggs and get new eggs if you want to end up hatching the event Pokemon. With that being said, guys, that is pretty much all I have to say. Again, you can check out this website if you want to stay tuned if any of these eggs slots change. Also, all the hatch chances I talked about with the percentage in this video, it's all community based. So it's obviously not going to be completely 100% real as it's all based on data that the community has submitted. So it's not actual Niantic stats. With that being said, guys, comment below if you want me to do this every single season so you guys can stay updated with the egg pool because maybe then we can make one next season so you guys know what's hatching next season. And also comment below if you have any questions. Really appreciate y'all watching. We're going to see you in the next one. Fall for tips. Peace.